Hey gamers, today we're looking at the classic game Lords of Waterdeep and the expansion Scoundrels of Skullport. Let's check them out. Okay, so I've set up this game with the expansion, and it's very easy. I'll try to separate what's the base game and what's the expansion. Uh, really quickly, this is all the expansion here, and this is all the base game. Now, the expansion does come with extra quest, intrigue, and buildings, as well as some extra Lords of Waterdeep. The expansion only also comes with these five-of-a-kind uh, cubes. If you get too many cubes on your thing, you don't want to run out of cubes in the game, you can use this to supplement five cubes when you get them. They're just little tokens. Uh, but anyway, each player is going to pick from one of the four factions here, or five factions, I should say. There is a sixth faction called the Grey Hand. This is in the expansion. Um, I've chosen the green faction there called the Harpers, and I get my little uh, player, uh, player board there. I get this little token for it's a 100 when I go around the track of marker. Here's my score counter, score counter right there on the zero. When I go around it once, I'll just flip it over to 100. Uh, you're going to get a ton of these little things, and these will help you indicate which buildings you own. For instance, later in the game you can buy buildings, and when you do, you just place your emblem next to it and just matches right up. So everyone knows you're going to get that bottom reward, uh, knowing it's yours. And again, there are several of these that each player has in the game. They won't use them all. Uh, each player starts the game with X amount of pawns. If it's a two-player game on the base game, they get four. If it's a three-player game, they start with three. If it's a two-player game, I mean four-player game, they start with two. Now, if they are playing with the expansion, they get plus one to whatever it is. So again, that would be for a four-player game, a three-player game, and a two-player game. All right, You just get plus one to whatever the base game gives you. Um, you're also going to get access to another character, either a fifth or sixth, depending on if you're playing a two-player with the expansion, and you'll put it here. That'll be released when you get to the fifth round and it'll tell you there on the board. Now, speaking of all these gems, you, you take three, they give you a big old bag of these gems. They give you some extra ones because there are some buildings that produce gems. But anyway, you do three stacks on each one of the eight rounds you'll have. And to begin the round off, you'll just add these coins to each one of the buildings. Uh, each time, each round, these buildings go unpurchased. They'll get more gems thrown onto them. One gem is worth one victory point. So after a while, you can be looking at some decent victory points just buying one of these buildings and putting them up on the board. Uh, this is very simple worker placement on how it's done. You can have all your cubes right here in the middle. It really doesn't matter if they're separated or mixed. Uh, you're going to shuffle this deck, deal out uh, two quest cards, and then, I mean, four quest cards on the board, two quest cards to every player. Their quests are um, uh, revealed. They're not secret. So these are the ones I got. There are different types. There's Warfare, Commerce, Piety, Arcana, and I have another one here called Skullduggery. So I have two right here. I'll, take, I'll start off with two quests my active quest there. Also, you're going to shuffle this Lords of Waterdeep deck, and there are all these different lords that will give you bonus points at the end of the game for achieving certain things. So for instance, this guy, at the end of the game, I score four points, four victory points for each commerce and piety that I uh, quest that I complete. Well, that's nice because I've already got this piety quest here. If I finish, I get eight, and then I get an reward. I get another quest card from Cliff Watch Inn, which is up here. Some of them give you instant rewards. Some of them just give you victory points. Some of them give you ongoing uh, rewards or bonuses, extra you know special abilities in the game, depending on what they say. And if those, once you complete a quest, you're supposed to put it face down here. However, if it has a once per round, you know, like a lingering ability, then you'd uh, just keep it up, up, but just keep it on top of the deck there. So this game is very, very simple, easy worker placement. Uh, let me show you how it's done. Oh, first off, I forgot, <laughs> if you're doing the expansion, you'll lay out under under Mountain, Skullport, and the Skullport uh, Corruption track there. I'll explain how that works in a minute, but these, these are all part of the expansion. So, each player gets a Lords of Waterdeep card. They'll tuck it right underneath where it says Lords of Waterdeep. It's your secret to know. You can look at it throughout the game if you forgot what, what your uh, goals are. Uh, each player is also going to get Intrigue cards. They're going to start off with two Intrigue cards. Intrigue cards can do different things. 
things. You can play them at the Water Deep Harbor here, and they can uh, give you bonuses in the game or screw other players over, or force other players to go on a mandatory quest. That means before they finish any of their other quests, they have to take this mandatory quest too. And mandatory quests are low victory points or low rewards. So it just kind of hinders them from completing the big rewards if you put a mandatory quest on them, which is really cool. So if I look here, it tells me uh, how many, what all cubes I need to complete this quest and how much money I need. Now, every player starts with a different amount of money depending on who's going first. First player starts with four coins, second player starts with five coins, third player starts with six coins, and so on and so forth. Once you distribute out your coins, first player starts, they're going to get this little starter icon, the little castle here, the rook, to show that they're going first, and then they'll start placing it and take their action. Now, I'm gonna zoom in on the board because most of these actions are self-explanatory, okay? Just get in on the main section here. If I place it here, I get two orange cubes. Now, all these stand for different characters, which you need to, you know, I can't remember what's what, but you know, you need two whatever blacksmiths or warriors or gnomes. I don't know. You can look it up. It's just fantasy here, but they're just cubes. But it tells you what all adventures you need to go on this. So if I go there, I get two orange cubes. If I go here, I get one cube. If I go here, I get two black cubes. If I go here, I get one white cube. So obviously white and purple are a little bit harder to get. If I go here, I take first player and I take an entry card from the top of the deck. If I go uh, over here, I get four coins, you know, so this is all very self-explanatory. There are three spaces to go up here and get quests. The first space, I get a quest and two coins. If I go and decide to play there instead, I get a quest and I could get an entry card. And if I played here, I would just reset the quest you know, just take them all, throw them in the discard, deal out four more, and pick from one of those. Now again, there's only three spaces available, and so if you don't get in there, you just don't get a quest that round. Also down below here are the last two. Uh, this is the Builder Saw, only one person can go there per turn, and they take and pay the gold that's associated at the top once they do. Uh, they get however many victory points, you know, like I said, depending on what rounds, you can have more of these victory points climbing up. So let's say I bought uh, this one. Yeah, I paid my eight coins, I get two victory points, so I go up two on the board, and then I would take this building, just like I told you, place it in any one of these open areas, and then place, place my little uh, token there to show that, hey, if anyone uses that special ability, meaning getting two orange and a purple, I can either get an orange or a purple. Now, it doesn't happen when I go in there, but if another player goes on there, then they can take that reward and I can get the little sub reward. So it kind of behooves you to get a few of those buildings in the game, especially ones that you think a lot of people are going to do. Now, after that's done, at the end of the round, of course, a new building will come out and the other two will stay out there and just keep gathering points on them. And so basically that's it for the uh, uh, base game. You're going to keep doing that until you go through eight rounds. And again, every round you're just removing the gems. At the fifth round, you're also going to be getting a bonus player. Waterdeep, you play one, and there's only three spots available. You get to play one of your entry cards on a player or just play it in general. Now, at the end of the round, when everyone's done playing, you get to reposition these in another unclaimed area on the board. So it's kind of cool because not only do you get to play an entry card, but you get to do something else. But unfortunately, that action is going to be, you know, <laughs> where people haven't played that round, which may be a little bit of a problem, you know. But at least it gives you a little bit bonus than just playing one of these cards because the entry cards even though they're great, they're not all super powerful. So that's kind of cool. Now, with the expansion, if you have the expansion, it's really not that much. It's just some extra spaces to go on. And let me go over here to the expansions and kind of show you. Um, first off, the simplest one here is Undermountain. Undermountain, if you place one here, you can get a cube of your co whatever color you want or an orange and a black. If you go here, you get to get a quest card from the quest, uh, quest area and play an entry card. And if you went here, you got two entry cards. Maybe you weren't even interested in getting first player, you just got two entry cards. Skull Port's a little bit differently. Um, these are really big rewards, and this one's like two orange, two black. This one's like two of any color. This one's like get a quest, get an entry, get five dollars. But you see it has these little blue markers on it? That means it is corruption. And if you look up here, there is the corruption track. And each time you play in those areas, or there are sometimes in the expansion, there are uh, certain quests that will give you corruption as well. And whenever you do, you take one and add it to 
to your player board. Now, if you see, I emptied out the first uh, option here. So that means at the end of the game, each one of these are going to be minus one to that player. But as more and more players are taking corruption in the game, it can really start climbing up. So now they're worth minus four each. Now there are ways to get rid of corruption. Sometimes there are ways to put it back on the track too, to kind of lower the uh, hit points you'll be getting. But you think, oh, I'll never get corruption. But some of those quests are so good, you want, it, you want to complete them. And a lot of these spots are very tempting. And so it's a good balance of seeing, you, you take some corruption, but not too much corruption. Now, I should say something about the money real quick. Um, the money comes in denominations of one, which is the square, and five, which is the crescent. And basically, again, same, same, same uh, thing even with the expansion. Uh, first winner after eight rounds wins. And that's the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the games? Well, there you have it. It's simple worker placement, right? Uh, I hear, I've heard a lot of Lords of Waterdeep. Lord of, Lords of Waterdeep has been around for a long, long time, okay? I don't know how long. I'm saying it's close to 10 years, maybe, eight or 10 years. And I've seen it forever, and everyone keeps telling me, Matt, if you love worker placement, you gotta get Lords of Waterdeep. And when I looked at it, I was like, that game looks boring, man. <laughs> and I never got it. Well, for my birthday, I had a bunch of gift cards on Amazon. I didn't know what to spend them on because I didn't have any games I really wanted. And then I said, wait a minute. Maybe it's finally time to get Lords of Waterdeep because a lot of my games that I have, all of them say, if you like that game, you'll love Lords of Waterdeep. I was like, all right, let me try it out. Folks, this is simple worker placement. Okay, it is fun though. It is fun for a beginner worker placement game, for a uh, gateway game for gamers. This is something you should get. And you know me, I like light, simple worker placement. So to be honest, this is right up my alley. I really do enjoy this game. Um, we played a couple of different games. It's more fun with uh, more players, but even with two players, we had a really close game where you're moving back and forth. Now, do you need the expansion? No, not really, but I would say go ahead and add it if you like the base game. This one's worth your time. I do, and I play with them all together. It says you can play with, you know, the skull port or with the, whatever the other one was. Um, you can play with one or the other, but play with both. It's fine. It doesn't take that long. Uh, the game's very self-explanatory. People get into it. I mean, yeah, the cards are thematic and everything, but we just had a fun time. And uh, the buildings you don't want to get that many of. I've noticed in a lot of our games, some every once in a while someone will get a building if, it, if it's relative to them, if they think a lot of people will step, uh, get on it. But there was one game we played where no one won any of the buildings because they didn't seem to be that beneficial until the very end when they're worth eight points each. And everyone was like, okay, I'm going to get me a game, you know, I'm going to get me a building. Um, so buildings may be a weak spot, maybe a wasted movement from time to time. I don't know. I mean, if you get one that's really good and all the players are going to it, then you're going to make money off of it, but, or get resource off of it. But uh, I do love both games. I, I, I am glad I finally got this game. I wish I would have got it way a long time ago. I would have loved it even more, but it's your cut and dry uh, worker placement game. But if you like that, I say cut and dry, I mean, there's uh, the artwork looks great and everything, but you know what I mean. There's nothing special or added on to it. Back in the day when it came out, I bet everyone loved it. I know why everyone loved it and why it's still a favorite, but it is a gateway game and it's staying in my collection. Plus, by the way, uh, just empty out the re uh, insert in this game and you can dump all the contents into this box. And I really like that because uh, I don't have much room on my shelf for many more games. So uh, overall, I love Lords of Waterdeep and I can highly recommend recommend it if you like beginner worker style games and with, with, with a good theme on it. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on!